What's up, what's up, it's your boy KC, how y'all doing? This is episode 3 of my podcast show. I hope y'all enjoyed the last two shows. Um, Before I get down to business here, I want to talk about a situation that I got into at work. Um, A couple of days ago, there was a situation that happened that just really messed up my mind. This really messed me up. And I know you see these kind of things every day, but when you see it for yourself... It, it can really do damage to you. I had to break up a fight between two brothers. Older brother, younger brother. The younger brother was either with this girl or he was deeply in love with this woman. And he looked like the type of guy like he would do anything for her. The way he was talking about her and everything. The older brother decides that he's going to steal her because he thinks that he can. And he did. You know what I'm saying? So they're out there fighting. I get in this and, you know, because I'm a security officer and I'm like, what is going on here? And they're telling me and I almost forgot I was at work. You know what I'm saying? Because that is the most dirty, disgusting thing ever you can ever do to somebody. Your own blood, your own brother, someone that looks up to you and wants to be like you. You're supposed to protect him and you steal the girl that he's in love with or that he's with. Just because you think you can? What is wrong with people in this world, man? You gonna do that? You can't even trust your own family now? Your own family will stab you in the back like that? And this kid, you should have saw the look on his face. He was 20 years old. You should have saw the look on this kid's face. He was destroyed. He was devastated. He was hurt. He did nothing but cry for hours and hours and hours. And I'm trying to do my patrols and I just keep seeing this kid and I keep seeing him and I'm like, you know, I feel so bad for this kid, man. And the girl went off with the brother, so she's no better than him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I go and I talk to this kid because he's hurt. He had nobody to talk to. He's just sitting there and I'm just like, I went up to him. I said, listen, go home, grieve, cry, whatever it is that you're going to do. You get up the next morning and you move on. You let the strength build you up and you go on. You go forward. You know, forget about what happened because there's always a better girl than the last girl. And if she honestly will let somebody steal her like that, then she wasn't yours to begin with. I said, you know what? I know how you're feeling. I know what it's like to feel pain like that. I may be young. I'm I'm on my way to 28. But I have been through some things when it comes to the ladies that I've been with in my life and I don't like to see that I don't like to see that I love my brother to death I love my brother Mike to death he's he's my best friend I've looked up to him my whole entire life I um you can see a lot of his of his um influences in me you know so for you know if he ever did that to me I would feel the exact same way that this kid felt because it's something that I never expected and I never will expect you know what I'm saying yes I've had girls do me dirty like that trust me when I tell you I've had women that have done me dirty ladies that have went with friends of mine quotation marks on on the friends part so I know what it's like to get this like that and for me I've had my days where I've cried even though it, it doesn't look like I don't look like the type of guy that would do that but I've had my days when I was down. I've had my days when I've cried, when I cut myself off from the world. And, you know, I have my time to do that. I get up and move on. Because ain't no woman in this world worth destroying my life, having that much power over me to make me just depressed. There's no woman powerful enough to do that. And you're not going to keep me down. And I hope that I helped this young man because he sure as heck needed it. Because an older brother, any brother or sister or whoever, they're supposed to protect you, not hurt you, not do you dirty. You know what I'm saying? And I wish those two well, but he needs to remember something. Paybacks is a you know what. Karma comes back around and the same thing is going to happen to him. And when he looks for his little brother... To, to support him and to be to have his back, he's gonna be all alone. And as for the girl, to hell with her. Anybody that dirty, sure as hell, I'm not even gonna waste my time talking about her. And I wish this kid well. 
on to another subject i want to talk about wrestling for a little bit specifically the wwe fans i can't believe how childish a lot of them are acting over this daniel bryan situation it's ridiculous man don't you people understand that this is a storyline don't you understand what's going on here and you guys are hijacking shows because you don't get your way because he's not in the title picture and all that stuff i got nothing against daniel bryan but he ain't stone cold steve austin he ain't the rock he's not Shawn michaels he's not undertaker or hogan or warrior or any of these guys you know what i'm saying for them to act that way all vincent man has to simply say is all right if the fans want to act that way we will never bring another show to their town ever again he has money like that there are so many cities that want to see wwe come to their neck of the woods and you guys get it and you sitting up there acting like that the disrespect that you show all the wrestlers here that come out here and try to have a show for you guys the fact that you boo these guys for no reason you boo them for no reason batista does not deserve to get booed man the guy came back and he's doing his thing. You have no right to boo him just because your favorite guy didn't win the Royal Rumble. So what? This guy did nothing wrong but come back to wrestling, a sport that he loved and he wanted to be in. And all you guys do is insult him. You guys crap all over everything just because Daniel Bryan ain't in it. So the hell what? As for CM Punk, he walked out on y'all. This man didn't fire him. He walked out on his contract that he signed and he had responsibility to complete that contract before he decided to leave and he walked out. He was the one that didn't show up to the appearances that a lot of people paid out of pocket to go see him at autograph signings and house shows and all that. CM Punk did this to himself. Vince McMahon didn't do that to him. He walked away. You guys need to realize that. He walked out on you. He walked out on the company that he was that he had responsibilities to. And whatever happens in his career from this point on is his own fault. You guys sit up there and you chant Daniel Bryan, you chant yes during other guys' matches, and you and you don't expect for these guys to be mad? Because it's not Daniel Bryan in this match, it's these guys fighting. You know. You guys need to understand. You guys need to respect that. That's not the way that the fans used to act when I was growing up. We enjoyed seeing everybody. Jake the Snake Roberts, Ravishing Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Brett the Hitman Hart, Shawn Michaels. We enjoyed seeing all those guys. Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, my favorite wrestler, Macho Man, Randy Savage, The Undertaker. We enjoyed seeing everybody because they all had their own storylines they all had their own talent and their own styles of wrestling and i think it's just ridiculous how you guys are acting i expect this from the little kids because little kids act that way but grown-ass people you gotta be kidding me man grow up and take it for what it's worth daniel bryan will get his chance just like every other top star did every other top star top star got their chance to be the champion guys that they saw championship material and and, and d brian was the champion but he didn't draw that well now did he for all the pay-per-views that he headlined he didn't draw that well where were y'all then where were all these daniel bryan fans when he was the champion then y'all wasn't digging down in your pockets to go and see this guy and to get up to pay-per-view buy rates and all that stuff. Y'all wasn't doing nothing. So it's ridiculous, man. Get over yourself. It's Vincent Man's show. I'm not siding with him. But it is his show. He can do whatever he wants. It's his money that goes into everything here. He pays he for everything that goes on. The rings, the championships, all the wrestlers. He can do whatever he wants. And let's be honest. If the WWE became the Daniel Bryan show every day all the time then people would get sick of this guy very very quickly so you just need to get over that just forget about it it'll happen when it happens stop crying stop being butthurt about it and just deal with it speaking of WWE the Hall of Fame 
you know, I'm trying to understand why they won't put Macho Man Randy Savage in because he had a huge part in the way wrestling is then and the way that it was up until he retired. He had a huge part. I don't know what the deal is, but he should have been in there. No matter what the situation is, he earned his spot a long time ago. He earned the respect of the fans. He was popular all around the world. He drew a lot of money being the WWF champion for that whole year. When Hulk Hogan was out making his movies and all that stuff, Macho Man was carrying the company. And I believe that he did extremely well. And for them not to have him in the Hall of Fame is an insult. It proves that this Hall of Fame is nothing but garbage. As he said, nothing but garbage. Anyways, lay off the Ultimate Warrior, please. For those fans who crap all over the fact that he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, let the man alone. He put his time in. He was one of the most popular wrestlers of the 90s and the late 80s. He played a huge part in getting people into watching wrestling too. It wasn't just Hulk Hogan. All these other guys, him, Macho Man, Jake the Snake, etc. They all played a part in getting these people to watch wrestling. And the Ultimate Warrior is a huge part of my childhood. He's, he was one of my favorite wrestlers and he still is. I still enjoy watching his matches just like I did then. And so what if he's not the greatest wrestler of all time? You know what I'm saying? He's not, you know, he's not one of those technical guys. But he was popular and a lot of people liked him. Get off his case. He's going into the Hall of Fame. You don't have a choice in the matter. So get off of it. Let the man be. Let him take his spot in the Hall of Fame. Because there's a lot of guys in there right now that I feel don't even deserve that spot. I'm not going to name any of them. But there are plenty of dudes that I felt did nothing but crap all over people. And snuff people out and step on their dreams to get to where they're going right now. Or where they are, where they were then at that point, I meant to say. So the Ultimate Warrior is going in. Deal with it. And move on. On to the next part of this podcast. I want to talk about video games again. Surprise. Um, I recently started doing Let's Plays. And right now I'm in the middle of Batman NES. And it's something I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the hell out of playing those games again. Because it brings back so many memories. And the funny thing is a lot of people look at me when I say I haven't played certain games. They look at me like, oh my god. You've never played that game? What's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. It's just the fact that I wasn't interested. You know, um, I've never played Mega Man. I've never played Zelda. I don't have anything against those games. It's just something that I didn't want. You know, when I got the Nintendo Entertainment System, I played Super Mario Brothers. I played Contra. I played Double Dragon. I played Ninja Turtles and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Those were the games that I had. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have... Those games, because I really didn't know too much about them. You know, I was playing Metroid and stuff like that. So, cut me a break here. And speaking of Nintendo, good God, did they have a lot of horrible games for that system. So many bad games. I don't know who thought of, of making these games. Like, the Friday the 13th game and, and Nightmare on Elm Street game and Karate Kid and anything that LJN made is garbage. Anything, any game that those guys ever made was pure and utter garbage. So, lose hope there. Whenever you see the, the, the Rainbow of Doom, as the, the angry video game nerd would say, it's a garbage game. You had Action 52, which God knows who the hell made that piece of shit. That game was horrible. And then it went into the Super Nintendo where they had Spider-Man and X-Men which LJN made that. And that game, I gotta say, is probably the best game that LJN has made. It still sucks. It sucks ass. You know, but it's better than a lot of that garbage that they used to, that they had there. I mean, they screwed up the plot in the game, putting Wolverine in a freaking uh, clown house. And I looked at that, I was like, good God, what were they thinking? You know, they did have a lot of crappy games, and every system has that. If you go to Nintendo 64, 
you know, I like the system, but they had so many bad games for that system. So many games that I only had two games that I played for Nintendo 64. I had Mortal Kombat Mythologies, which wasn't bad. It wasn't bad as people try to make it sound. And I had Resident Evil 2, which was pretty good too. But they had, I mean, also I had uh, Mario 64, Super Mario 64, which was a great game. It's, it is my favorite uh, game for that system. But they had so many bad games like like Superman 64 and the, and the, uh, the Aquaman game and the Batman game that they have for that. And I look at that, I'm like, oh my God. Just turn me away from the system. Just turn me away. And I thank God every day that they didn't attempt to make a Metroid game because they probably would have screwed that up. But anyways, I'm getting back to my Let's Plays. I'm just, right now, I'm taking a little bit of a break. Because when you get your ass whooped all the time in a game like Batman, you get rage. You get that feeling of throwing your controller through the window or through the TV or through the wall or anything you can chuck it at. Because that game is so hard that it literally makes you want to rip your hair out. That's the thing. I love the fact. Uh, I love the games back then. Because there were challenges in all those games. There were no code. I mean, there were codes. But there were no... Um, no e Games wasn't easy back then like they are now when you got uh, checkpoints and you got unlimited ammo for all weapons and you got you know so many healing items like going through Resident Evil 5 was a breeze for me even on professional mode back then in the in the world of Resident Evil it wasn't that easy they give you one gun you know what I'm saying they give you a knife if you're lucky and you have to go through the game like that. The games back in the Nintendo world where you die. Like like a game like Double Dragon 3. You have one life. One life. No matter where you are in the game. If you die. You go all the way back to the beginning. If that's not challenged. Then I don't know what the hell is. The fighting games back then. Street Fighter 2. When you played that on the hardest difficulty. You are going to get your ass whooped. Games like Mortal Kombat 2. Where they spam throws. And you get your ass whooped by Kentaro. Who can seemingly throw you. No matter what move you do. That was challenge back then. Fighting Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's punch out. Was a challenge. The things that they have now. Like you can just beat a game. Like the new Tomb Raider. I loved it. It was nice. But I beat it in two days. That's how easy it was. Once you got past all the graphics and everything, it was like that. It was just easy. When you beat a game, you, you kind of feel like that game wasn't worth 60 bucks. I'm saying I'm not talking about you got to make a game as long as Skyrim because God knows I don't have the patience to try to beat that because the game is too damn long. I mean, that's like a lifetime game right there. Like when you have nothing else to do, you know, but that's another thing that's wrong with the video game world it's just the lack of difficulty I mean there are I can pick maybe a handful of games that are difficult out there you know what I'm saying and Tomb Raider is not any any one of those Tomb Raider is easy um I heard that um well Dynasty Warriors can be difficult too depending on the difficulty that you put it on I know that for sure um Games like Monster Hunter, that's kicked my ass. The third one for the 3DS because it's crazy difficult trying to hack these monsters down. This uh, game that I have Tolkien in is ridiculously difficult. Um, There's so many other... I, I'm trying to think of that the name of that game that... Uh, um, I think it's Demon Souls or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. They said that that game is, is seriously hard. Seriously hard. Other than that, there really isn't that many difficult games out there. I breezed right through pretty much every game that I had. Dead Space. You know, I breezed through that. I breezed through uh, Dead Space 2. I breezed through, like I said, the Tomb Raider. The Dynasty Warriors uh, Strike Force. 
Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6, I beat that in one day. I beat Resident Evil 6. I sat there because I was off that day. And I played it from the time I got it. Which was 9 o'clock in the morning. I played it all the way until I, I went to work that uh, the next night. And I beat that whole game. What's wrong with that? with that there? Resident Evil Revelations, I beat it in a day and a half. Granted, it's more difficult than 6 is, but come on. Come on. Hollywood, what are you guys thinking? Tell me that you didn't cast Ben Affleck as the next Batman. Somebody tell me that this is a joke. You pick probably the worst actor ever to play the greatest superhero ever. Are you guys high? Are you drunk? What the hell is wrong with you dudes? There's no way that the fans are going to accept that movie. Well, maybe there's probably that one fanboy that's like, oh, Ben Affleck's the greatest actor of all time. Nah, he ain't. You guys are trying to completely destroy the Batman's image with this guy? Somebody, Somebody's messed up in the world of Hollywood. You guys can't seem to get anything right when it comes to movies. Video game-based movies, I've talked about that. They all suck. They all suck. Mortal Kombat... Resident Evil, Double Dragon, Street Fighter, Super Mario Brothers, Parasite Eve, Final Fantasy. They can't get anything right. They screwed up the Daredevil movie by putting Ben Affleck in there. Didn't they learn from that? Obviously not. The Dragon Ball movie was horrible and they got the nerd to talk about coming out with a sequel. Somebody's playing jokes here, man. Jeez. The only movie that was halfway acceptable was the first Mortal Kombat. That's the only movie that I can get through without throwing up. And the Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider movie, without freaking wanting to go blind after seeing the second one, those were the only two that I could possibly get through. Every other one was garbage. You guys need to rethink this because if you guys come out with this movie, he better, Ben Affleck better be prepared to do the, the best performance of his life in order to convince the fans that he can pull this off because Batman is no joke. When somebody plays Batman, you got to have somebody that's in that role that can play it. Michael Keaton played the hell out of Batman in the original movies. Um, also, Val Kilmer did pretty good. George Clooney was horrible. Learn from him. He was horrible. Kristen Bell tried too damn hard, and he was just as bad. It's just like, what are you guys doing, man? Even with the Superman series, you can continue to come out with Superman movies, and that's fine. But everybody in their mind knows that the role of Superman was made for Christopher Reeves. God rest his soul. He's been gone since I think 2006. But he was Superman. Nobody will ever be able to play Superman as good as that guy did. End the story. Anime fans. I did not forget about y'all. You know everybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge anime fan. Till I die. Um, I just wanted to do top five of my favorite animes and top five of my least favorite animes number five of my most favorite inuyasha anybody that doesn't know what that is inuyasha is the story of a guy who's half demon half human half dog demon who was bound to a tree by the love of his life kikyo who were they were both betrayed by a demon named naraku who's half demon also he twist it's a twisted love tragedy he ends up meeting a girl named kagome who is a reincarnation of Kikyo who died many years ago, many, many, many years ago. He ends up falling in love with her. Then it becomes this weird love triangle between all of them because Kikyo was brought back to life, brought back from the dead. Uh, her body's made of clay by some evil, ugly ass priestess, if she wants to call herself that. And it's just got this love triangle going. And it's just the most interesting thing I've ever seen. You know, he has powers to kill demons. 
and the storyline progresses going through fights with his brother Shishomaru who's badass I would love to see him up against I would love to see Shishomaru go up against Kenpachi Soraki in Bleach that would be the most epic fight ever um number four Bleach one of my all time favorite animes with uh, Ichigo Kurosaki a 15 year old kid who is part Shinigami and part uh I forgot. I don't know if he's a Ron Car or Hollow. I forgot what what it was. I, I apologize, anime fans. But that show is off the chain. It has everything that I love about anime. You got swords. You got samurai style and ninja style fighting. Also, you got powers. People that are Hollows. People that are Soul Reapers. That are have been living for God knows how long. And they go through and they battle all kinds of demons and bounce and all that. And it's just off the chain. Number three, Mori Beto, Guardian of the Spirit. The story about this girl named Boss of the Spear Wielder. A 28-year-old woman who somehow ends up getting the prince, uh, the prince Chagum. She has to protect him with her life because she's a bodyguard. So she ends up mothering this kid and teaching him how to fight and teaching him how, you know, the ways of the common world, you know, pulling him away from the royal aspect that he grew up in where they talked funny. And it's it's a beautiful story. If none of y'all have checked it out, y'all need to check that out. It's a really good anime. Number two, Ghost in the Shell. Do I need to say anything else about that Ghost in the Shell about about this team section 9 who goes through and they take care of terroristic threats major Motoko Kuzanagi who is the hottest babe ever in anime in my opinion so shut up if you want to get mad at that um, you got a badass a badass right arm um, um, Bato this guy is a, is a powerhouse I enjoy watching anything with him he was funny as hell too but it's a lot of a lot of tactical things like if if they was going to make a Metal Gear Solid anime, they need to take Ghost in the Shell and work with that. Because this is everything that you can think of. They got all kinds of, of guns, all kinds of abilities, being able to cloak and disappear and, and do invisible. You know, it's just crazy. And number one of my top five, of course, Dragon Ball. Do I need to say anything about that? Everybody who knows Dragon Ball knows why that's that's my favorite anime of all time. I don't even need to say nothing about it. All I need to do is say one word. Goku. Kakarot. Whatever. That's all I needed to say. Top five of my least favorite ones. Hamtaro. Garbage. <laughs> um, Shin Chan. Garbage. <laughs> didn't like it um i don't like there's there's another one i'm trying to think of i I completely forgot the name but it it was really really bad like just really really horrible you know fully coolies in this list too number two the reason why it's a good anime i just don't understand what the hell it's about i never liked it oh number three is digimon Rip off a Pokemon, can't stand that. Didn't like it, don't like it now. Number two, Fully Cooley, like I said, it is just, I don't understand what the hell that anime is about. I never will. Somebody was high when they wrote that. It's a beautiful looking anime and I like I liked the style and I did watch it. But when you don't understand the plot, the anime is pretty much useless. And number one, Astro Boy. I never liked Astro Boy. I thought it was garbage when I was a kid. I thought it was garbage from, you know, from my dad's childhood. It it sucks. It just everything about that sucks. I, when they put that on Toonami, I was like, these guys are, are crazy. I'm like, there's no way they could think that the fans would get into this show. They took off Big O to put Astro Boy on. They took off Gundam Wing to put that. I'm like, no, no. There you have it, my top five favorite, my top five at least favorite, and that's pretty much it when it comes to anime, that's all it is for my show today, 
Um, I want to throw a shout out to my boys down in the Church Street uh, Tavern again, Ricky, Bobby, and Adam. Throw a shout out to my family and my friends. This is your boy KC. I'll check you out later.